Shit, I don't want to do this no more. Hello guys, this is Delusional here. I have another little guide video, I guess, for Yoshimitsu. Now, for today's video, uh, I wanted to showcase exactly how do you perform the guard break setups with Yoshimitsu. Now, one way you can go about it is usually by either going for down forward 2 into this. And that's it. That's usually the setup. But once you perform it, you would then have other options to how to do it from other combo setups. You don't want to just only use down forward 2. So for example, you can also do it from your up forward 3, which I missed. You can do it from Kensho back to 1. You can do it from other moves as well, just, it just depends if you can launch the opponent from them. For example, Poison Breath also works. Now the great thing about this particular type of guard break setup is that no matter what the individual player is going to do, let's say for example if they decide that they want to go for a wake up mid kick or a wake up low kick. This also works against individuals that try to go for spring kick or a recovery kick. It also works against individuals that tend to go for a quick recovery instead. If they attempt to side roll or side okeme, it would also still hit them out of it. The only weakness when doing this setup is if they decide to do a quick back roll away from you. So essentially, just by holding back, you won't get hit by the move. You'll have enough distance to cover if you, let's say, are facing against a Yoshimitsu player and you want to get away from the setup, that's the only way. You can't be afraid of what they'll do next, but if they attempt to do it without charging it, you can still get hit. So that's the other caveat when doing this setup. This is why this setup is super good. Because whatever the opponent may do, they'll still end up losing. But that's why the opponent has to think, is the Yoshimitsu going to go for the charge up version so then I can then back roll away? Or is he going to go for the faster version? Which if he were to use the faster version instead, then it will whiff. So regardless of the situation, if the opponent decides to attack while they're trying to wake up or if they want to side Okeme quickly enough, they would still manage to get hit by the charge version, but if it's the quick version, they can immediately get away by simply side Okeme quickly enough. But if they try to do a quick back roll instead, they'll get hit by the fast version of the 1 plus 2 attack. But if it's the charge version, then they'll be able to escape it. Now, of course, you don't have to just go for the typical launchers as well. Like, you can still use these launchers, but you don't have to go for the same combo route is what I mean. 
So for example, you don't gotta go for down 2-2 two, two into down forward 1, into the typical down 2-2-2 two, two, two for the tornado bound, to then get yourself the Kencho 2 whiffing the Kencho 2. That's the one important thing. You gotta whiff the Kencho 2 and then charge the 1 plus 2 to then land the setup. But you don't have to go, you don't have to go for that. You can just go for this one instead. This also works. The thing is, is that it's better than the other combo setup because if they decide to do a quick back roll, they would actually still get hit by the follow up charging one plus two because they are closer to you. But this also means that other particular types of moves can actually hit out of Yoshimitsu attempting to do the 1 plus 2. But not in the case of the wake up mid kicks or low kicks. And recovery kick actually does work against this particular setup if you use this combo route. A spring kick still loses. So essentially you gotta be careful when you're using this particular setup against other opponents. They may decide to, you know, lab the move themselves and then see exactly how they can approach the Yoshimitsu and how to get away from him. Or how to essentially hit him out of attempting to go for the full charge 1 plus 2. Now you may be wondering what can you try to go for if the opponent does get guard broken by the move? The usual ender, once you get the guard break, is back 2-2 to get the heat engager. From there, you have massive opportunities to then land any of your unblockables if they don't just stand there like a scarecrow, essentially. Or you can go by jabbing them out to see whether or not if they will attack you because they're worried about your incoming unblockables. Now, the best thing about this setup also is that if you're in your heat state and you try to perform this combo, Well, I try to do another setup again to see if I can hit it again, but in this case, as you saw, if I'm in heat state and I perform this setup against the victor, or any character specifically, it doesn't have to be only victor, and I then get myself the guard break, I can guarantee myself the back 2-2 two -two into the heat dash to then go for a follow-up combo. This is guaranteed again if the opponent ends up getting hit by the guard break. The only way they can get away from this is if they end up backwards rolling away from you. So, in mind, by performing the setup, regardless if it's either from your launchers into 3-1 to then go into the more closer version of the setup, or using down 2-2 two -two into the down forward 1, and continuously going for the down 2-2-2 two -two -two for the tornado bound, going for that combo route, regardless of which one you go for, you have options to then apply the guard break. This was a very strong setup. And to be honest, I really do hope that the developers don't nerf this, because if they do, then I can assume the one of the two things they may do to try to nerf it is by making it so that once you do perform back 2-2-2, two, 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 they'll make it so that the opponent might come closer to you. So that's one way they can nerf it, which is going to destroy the setup. The second way they can probably end up destroying the setup is by making it so that the move no longer guard breaks and just give you massive plus frames. That's what I think that they can essentially try to go for to try to nerf this setup. To be honest, it is quite strong. And with this setup alone, you can essentially win most of your matchups by doing that. Because they had to make a proper read. But mind you that in certain stages, if the combo is too long, you may just get too close to the wall. I have had this happen to me many times where I try to perform the move only for the move to then hit with the... Kenshiro 2, which you need to whiff, and then 
they immediately cytochem me immediately and I can't perform my 1 plus 2 charge because they either interrupt me or they sidestep away in order to hit me. So it's a gamble if you want to go for the setup, but again, it's still very strong. You can legitimately get to higher ranks by simply doing the setup. I don't do it often simply because I don't want to use it as a clutch, if anything, or use it as a the be all end all type of setup because eventually players would figure out how to beat it. And then if that happens, then it becomes a problem during the matchup. So if you learn something with this, I hope that this would actually improve your gameplay. You guys are probably going to abuse this move, I can tell for sure. And a lot of you are going to go probably passing your ranks just because of this setup alone. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe and receive more of my shit, and stay tuned.